60 million years ago, following the mass extinction of the dinosaurs, giant snakes roamed the Americas. The biggest of these snakes was known as Titanoboa, and it was just as terrifying as it sounds. Related to modern day boa constrictors, Titanoboa was a monster. Thankfully, Titanoboa went extinct. But what if it didn't? That's exactly what we're going to talk about right now on Life's Biggest Questions. Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, the channel that asks the questions everyone else is too afraid to ask. I'm your host, Charlotte Dobre, and if you enjoy our content, leave a like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. Is there anything scarier than a gigantic snake? Maybe me when I wake up in the morning. A team of scientists found a Titanoboa fossil at an open pit coal mine in Colombia. The Titanoboa makes modern day anacondas look like toys. According to fossils, Titanoboa was 12.8 meters or 42 feet long and weighed about 1,100 kilograms or 2,500 pounds. But because snake fossils are extremely hard to find, it's not completely out of the question that it could have grown to be even larger. It's believed that Titanoboa ate large turtles and Crocodilomorpha, which were essentially giant crocodiles. The Titanoboa lived in what is believed to have been the first recorded neotropical forest that ever existed, where Central and South America exist today. How did Titanoboa get so big? Well, back during in the Paleocene era, the Earth was quite a bit warmer. The average temperature of its habitat was on average about 32 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The warm climate allowed for cold blooded snakes to grow very large, much larger than any snake we currently know of. Even to this day, as you move away from the equator, ectothermic animals decrease in size. Titanoboa became the rainforest's top predator, and for good reason. It is the biggest snake to ever have lived. Titanoboa killed its victims using asphyxiation, where it wrapped itself tightly around its prey and squeeze until its prey suffocated. Once you're in Titanoboa's mouth, there is no escape. Row upon row of sharp, curved teeth that point to the rear of its mouth keep the prey moving toward the stomach. Titanoboa slithered around in water and swamps. Thankfully, it began to go extinct toward the beginning of the Miocene era. But now that you know a little about Titanoboa, let's talk about what would happen if it never went extinct in the first place. First things first, because Titanoboa would need to live in warmer climates, it would only be able to survive in rainforests near the equator. This would be good news for everyone who lived farther north or south of the equator. It would, however, mean bad news for any Central and South Americans that lived anywhere near the habitat of the Titanoboa. Indigenous people in the area like the Aztecs and the Incas probably would have regarded Titanoboa as a god and would have made sacrifices to it. That is, if Titanoboa didn't prey on them. Perhaps Incas or Aztecs wouldn't have even existed. As Titanoboa hunted mostly in water, a way for forest dwelling people to escape it would be to build their homes in trees. The entire history of Central American indigenous peoples might be different. In modern times, there would of course be hunters who would try to track down Titanoboa for various reasons, perhaps even for food. Titanoboa meat would be considered a delicacy, one food connoisseurs would be eager to put on their plates. But catching a Titanoboa would not be easy. Navigating the difficult, swampy terrain of the rainforest would be needless to say, hard. But one thing you could do to lure it close would be to set a trap. Crocodiles, the Titanoboa's main food source, also lived until modern day. Set a trap with a crocodile and wait for a boa to come to you. Once it devoured its meal, like most snakes, it would be tired and less likely to attack. This would be the perfect time to strike. At the same time, countless books and television shows would be made about the Titanoboa. Nature shows like BBC's Planet Earth would do everything in their power, even risk lives to get footage of it. It's not likely that it would be kept in zoos. After all, it's huge and it would have to be fed crocodiles. No one knows exactly why Titanoboa went extinct. The main theory is that the temperature of the earth began to cool. The hotter the temperature, the bigger the snake. But the same is true for the opposite. This is because in places where the temperature is constantly hot, the metabolism of reptiles operates sufficiently. The bigger a snake gets, the more energy it needs to sustain it. But once the global temperature began to drop, the Titanoboa's metabolism could not adjust. And eventually, it went extinct. And I'm not mad about it. I don't know about you, but even small snakes scare the crap out of me. For now, I'm Charlotte Jobray and you've been watching Life's Biggest Questions. If you enjoyed this video, you'll love What If Megalodon Sharks Didn't Go Extinct? Clickable on the screen right now. Do you want to go on a Life's Biggest Questions binge? Well, we've put together a nifty playlist for you that you should check out. Make sure notifications are turned on by clicking the bell and then we'll see you in the next video.